people a very good morning today's session i came with the concept female reproductive system i divided female reproductive system into two parts that is external genitals and internal genitals so in today's session we will go with external genitals so what are external genitals what are there and what are their functions and all we will discuss in this session so let's go to the session first one we have vulva the external female genitals are called or collectively referred to as vulva so all the female external genitals all together are called as vulva what this consists of this consists of the labia minora mons pubis clitoris opening of the urethra which is also called as meters vaginal vestibule vestibular bulbs and vestibular glands the term vagina is often improperly used as a generic term to refer to the vulva or the female genitals even strictly speaking the vagina is a specific internal structure and the vulva the exterior genital only calling the vulva the vagina is compared to calling the mouth the throat throat is different mouth is different so in the same way vulva is different vagina is different so let's see what are the parts we have mons veneris what is mons veneris mons veneris is the latin for mound of venus so in latin we call the mons venus as mons veneris it is the soft mound at the front of the vulva if you observe the vulva which i gave in the diagram the front soft mound part is considered as vulva it is also called as mons pubis pubic region it is sexually sensitive in some women and protects the pubic bone and vulva from the impact of sexual intercourse so mons pubis is sexually sensitive in some women and protects the pubic bone and the vulva from the impact of sexual intercourse and after maturity or puberty it is covered with pubic hair so generally women reaches the age of puberty around 11 to 12 so at this stage we can see the secondary growth on the mons pubis it is usually in triangular in shape so the shape of mons pubis is more of a triangular in shape and heredity plays major role in the amount of pubic hair grown in an individual so it differs from individual to individual and the heredity plays a major role so the amount of pubic hair or the hair which is grown on our secondary sexual characters or the female genitals is mainly on heredity labia majora what is labia majora labia majora are the outer lips of the vulva so the outer lips of vulva are called as labia majora they are parts of loose connective and adipose tissues along with some smooth muscles labia majora wraps around the vulva from the mons pubis to the perineum right so this is one of the important point here so labia majora wraps around the vulva from the mons pubis to the perineum from the top to the last of the female genital vulva the entire covering is there that part is called lip like structures are called as labia majora longitudinal fissure called peduncle cleft is observed so what is observed in labia majora a longitudinal fissure called peduncle cleft is observed these labia are usually covered with pubic hair so these labia are usually covered with pubic hair so we know where the pubic hair grows so the pubic hair grows on mons pubis and it is color of the outside skin of labia majora is usually close to the color of the individual if you observe the color so the color will be more over very close or similar to the color of the individual there may be some variation sometimes the variations may occur the inside skin is usually pink to light brown so when we observe the inner lips or the inside skin of labia majora it is 
pink to light brown in color. They contain numerous sweat and oil glands. So what this labia majora contains? These contain glands which are related to oils and sweat. It has been suggested that the scent secreted from these glands are sexually arousing. So the scents which are secreted from these oil glands are especially modified or helps in arousing at the time of sex or intercourse. And the other we have labia minora or labia minora. What is labia minora? In the middle of the labia majora, labia minora are present. These are also called as inner lips of the vulva. So labia majora are called outer lips and labia minora are called as inner lips of vulva. Since fractures of tissue within the labia majora that folds and protect the vagina, urethra and clitoris. So labia minora are nothing but these are the thin stretches of tissue within the labia majora that folds and protect the vagina, urethra and clitoris. The appearance of labia majora can widely vary from tiny lips that hide behind or between the labia majora to large lips that protrude outside the labia majora. So we can see the major differences in individual to individual. It also depends upon individual to individual that the labia majora are tiny tip lips that will be hide or within the labia majora or sometimes they are like large lips that protrude outside the labia majora. No pubic hair is observed or present on labia minora. So we know that mons pubis contains pubic hair and labia majora also contains pubic hair but inner lips or labia minora does not contain any pubic hair. And there are sebaceous glands present in this region. The two smaller lips come together to form purpose, a fold that covers part of the clitoris. So the two inner lips or the two smaller lips come together to form a structure called purpose or a fold which covers the part of the clitoris. Then it will not cover the entire clitoris but it covers the part of clitoris. The labia minora protects both the vaginal and urethral openings. The important function of labia majora is also be called as protection of vaginal and urethral openings. Both the inner and outer labia are susceptible to pressure and touch. So what are they susceptible to? They are susceptible to pressure and touch. Who are they? Both the inner and outer labia. We have clitoris. What is clitoris? Clitoris is the visible small white structure which is oval in shape between the top of the labia minora and the clitoral food. So what is clitoris? Clitoris is visible as a small white oval structure between the top of the labia minora and the clitoral food. It is a small body of spongy tissue. So this part contains spongy tissue that functions absolutely for sexual pleasure. The part of the female external genitals which is mainly meant for sexual pleasure is clitoris. Only the tip or glance of the clitoris shows externally but the organ itself is elongated and branched into two forks called the crura that extends downwards along the rim of the vaginal opening towards the perineum. So once again, only the tip or glance of the clitoris shows externally. It is appeared externally with part, but the organ itself is elongated and branched into forks deepen inside. That part is called the crura, extends downwards along the rim of the vaginal opening towards the perineum. And the clitoris is much larger than most people think. So it is around 4 inch long on an average or it may be different in individual but on an average if we observe the clitoris is 4 inch long. 
the clitoral glands or the external tip of the clitoris is protected by the purpose or the clitoral hood so the clitoral glands or the external tip of the clitoris is covered or protected by the purpose or the clitoral hood this covering of tissue which is similar to the foreskin of the male penis in my previous class i have discussed about male structure male reproductive structure in that we have discussed about the covering purpose in the male this part is similar to that but here the clitoris does not contain any part of the urethra as it contains in the males during sexual excitement the clitoris gets erect and extends so at the time of sexual arousal or sexual excitement the clitoris gets erect and extends or protrudes the hood retracts making the clitoral glands more accessible so the retraction of the hood makes the clitoral glands more accessible size of the clitoris varies between woman to woman as i earlier said it depends upon individual and it's uh, based on the nature of the woman the clitoris size depends on some the clitoral glands is small and on others it is large and the hood does not cover it completely it does not cover it completely but a part of it is complete covered so the clitoral glands as i said differs from individual to individual it may be small or large to urethra what is urethra you can see the urethral opening in the image which i have given below the clitoris is the opening of the urethra and though urethra is not related to sex or reproduction it is included in in vulva so that is the reason why i kept this here the urethra is connected to the bladder so what is urethra urethra is the connection to the bladder and it is mainly related to our urinary system urethra is actually meant for the passage of the urine so what is the main function or the prime function of urethra it is to pass the urine outside of the body females the urethra is 1.5 inch long whereas in males it is 8 inches long so the difference we can see here the size of urethra in males and females in females it is 1.5 inches long whereas in males it is 8 inches long urethra is very close to the anus observe very clearly urethra is close to the anus and gynecologist for the woman to cleanse every time from top to back so that infections may not occur next we have hymen what is hymen in fold of mucus separates the lumen of the vagina with the urethral sinus is called hymen it is nothing but a fold which is made up of mucus which will separate the lumen of the vagina with the urethral sinuses sinus it may partially cover the vaginal orifice which happens occasionally it is perforated usually during lateral fetal development so at the time of the fetal development in the lateral stages it is perforated outside adhere to the hymen medically referred to as transaction can be seen in a small percentage of women or girls after their first penetration so generally hymen in our indian scenario we consider hymen is teared only after marriage and at the after first penetration occurs but usually it doesn't happen transaction is caused by penetrating trauma so generally it is the fear within the woman when sexual intercourse occurs and so because of this trauma the transaction occurs the appearance of hymen is not a reliable indicator of virginity or chastity as i aiming to perineum what is perineum the short stretch of the skin starting at the bottom of the vulva to the anus is called perineum perineum is nothing but a short a short stretch of the skin starting at the bottom of the vulva to the anus so it is very simple it is a small stretch of the skin 
which is starting from the bottom of the vulva to the anus. It is a diamond shaped area between the symphysis pubis and the coccyx and it forms the floor of the pelvis and the anal opening. So perineum, we can consider it as the floor of the pelvis and the anal opening. It can be further divided into urinogenital triangle and the anal triangle in the back. In the front, it is called urinogenital triangle and at the back, it is called the anal triangle. Perineum may tear in some women at the time of giving birth to the infant, which is apparently a natural one. So women give birth to the young ones and the infants comes out, this perineum may tear. So this is a common or natural phenomenon. Sometimes the physician suggests to cut this and the cut made by the physicians to the perineum is called as apiotomy.